Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I'm always on a mission to seek out what separates the very best from the rest of us. Always trying to get the insights, the distinctions, how to apply it, and taking action. So today I have a special guest from Australia, Elizabeth Gold. She's going to talk to us Feeling Forwards. That's her podcast. We're going to talk about about um, the difference between a goal and an aim, her story, wellness, self-care. It's going to be a fascinating story. She also has a uh, new book out that we'll talk about as well. So Elizabeth, welcome. Oh, thank you, Christopher. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Um, you know, we had connected through Podmatch and it's a great service. You know, normally you wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to interview guests such as yourself of that caliber. So tell us more about your story, your background, and what you do and how you get in and what you how you got started. Sure. Well actually my story starts with almost like failure in as much that I desperately wanted to be the next Agatha Christie. And 10 manuscripts in, it became pretty clear the publishing world didn't agree with me. But while I was busy being a, a lawyer and then uh, a senior executive and doing all the corporate things and starting businesses, I, I, I kept writing away. And I had that inner flame of hope that one day I would be a best-selling author. And then as life works out, things happen in an unexpected way. I was diagnosed with cancer, ag aggressive mm. breast cancer. I had to stop work. Um, I pulled through, obviously. I'm, I'm so grateful to be here. But while I was trawling the, the, uh, my favourite place, the bookstore, looking for inspiration on how to survive cancer, my business brain saw that there was like a gap in the market. A lot of cancer books about what to eat and um, single stories of survival. But I wondered how cancer survivors thought because I knew I had developed a very clear five rules, five patterns of thinking that had pulled me through. So I interviewed other cancer survivors, different genders, different ages, stages, different kinds of cancer. And I found we all thought in a very similar way. So I published, um, well, I got published my book, Secrets of Cancer Survivors, and it was an an overnight success, you know, 20 years of writing to be an overnight success, right? It was published in eight countries. And that really, I'd always been interested in high performance. But from that point on, with a few gaps here and there because of health issues, I've really focused on how to make high performance not only accessible, but understandable and make it very much about the science of success, not wishing and hoping. Mm. I love that. You have me intrigued because your story sounds very similar in different respects to mine. Uh, yours had yours had uh, was based on health. And um, we know we were talking backstage and you had this um, distinction between what is a goal and what is an aim. Tell the audience, you know, this kind of distinction. Yes, well, I found your story absolutely fascinating, Christopher, because so often I've been working with entrepreneurs for many years now. I was very lucky to be invited by Randy Zuckerberg to join her global leadership school as a coach, Zuckerberg Institute, which was um, very active until COVID. And it seemed to me that there are some fixed views that entrepreneurs have about how success will arrive and how it works that are really, really holding them back. Now, since it morphed into, I'm now in the neuroscience world as well. I'm a neuroplastician, but based on the science of the brain, I and all my coaching, I worked out there's actually a personal success method, if you like, and there's three elements to it. That's percentages. So, thirty percent is your your aim, forty percent is your inner justification, and then the remainder is your behaviours and attributes. So, in my latest book, Feeling Forwards. I distinguish between a goal and an aim. And as I shared with you backstage, I, I use the analogy of getting into medical school. Now, getting into medical school is a fantastic achievement and apparently makes every parent's heart very happy. <laughs> I'm not mine. sure it's, <laughs> what is it, a doctor, lawyer or nothing? Engineer. <laughs> the ambitious, yeah, exactly. The ambitious parent. That's the golden trio. Yeah. Helicopter but I like. <laughs> yeah, well, well goodness. Um, so I looked at it and, and, and thought about how crushing that can be. And I really, in my, in my book, I talk a lot about quantum physics as well um, in a very easy to understand way. But a goal can be absolutely crushing. 
And mm. the analogy I use is if you're heading towards a goal, it's a bit like running through a very narrow, dark tunnel and there's a light at the end. Because if you have a very defined goal, there's no sideways exit. And I, I write a, a lot about how the the mental and emotional patterns of elite athletes and so many athletes have spoken so bravely about depression and Michael Phelps has been a fantastic advocate for mental health but he he talks about after getting a gold medal how miserable he was one of our beautiful Australian swimmers talked about she felt herself sliding into depression while she was standing on the podium now the difference is with an aim instead of running through a dark tunnel if you have an aim it's a little bit like running on a track with fields either side and the horizon in the distance and i shared this example with getting into medical school and as much that let's, let's say your goal is to get into medical school which is fantastic but for whatever reason you don't make it maybe your marks aren't good enough maybe you don't pass the interview there's all sorts of elements to it now in in australia i'm, I'm sure it's similar in the states but if you unpack it and think okay well what was my aim in getting to medical school was it to help people was it to create a medical breakthrough was it because i'm a really nurturing person was it and you can unpack and there are a, a constellation of reasons why you want to be in the medical area well if that is your aim then not getting into medical school is a bump in the road it's not the end of the road so then you can start to explore other options do you not want to to be in healthcare at all do you want to be in in the in the beauty in the therapy therapeutic industry so when i'm coaching um a high performer who's not feeling like they're performing at the level they want to it's very much okay well what is your aim let's look at this first because sometimes your aim isn't even your own as we just joked about the parents but you know, I my son played football with uh, a the coach. Dad was seventh edition doctor, and he had three boys. And it was like, oh, no pressure. He said, no, no, there is actually no pressure. I see no reason why the eighth generation has to do anything in the medical field. And his boys didn't. They did something completely different. They chose their aim. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, it's quite interesting because uh, you know, getting you know, going through this whole process. I learned what it takes to be successful, even though, mm -hmm. like, even though that's it's not really what my passion was. So, um, and in a sense, it kept me on track. It kept me out of trouble because you know, if I didn't have a goal or aim, then I would probably be just lost and floundering. So, but uh, you know, I love this, and then this, you know, we have to really understand our motivations and reasons why we do things, um, which was really enlightening because a lot of parents they push their kids to you know certain things and it kind of hinders their their growth one uh, this well which i love you know this this goal aim thing and then you talk about these patterns which i really love because you know everything boils down to you know a couple patterns it's just repeated in different situations scenarios tell us about this like patterns of like you know the um uh, resilient people you know fighting through really changing things you know uh, making an impact. Mm, I love that. I, I interviewed a little while ago a chiropractor who's also an entrepreneur and he deals with, he specializes in recovery, particularly with elite athletes. And he said, you know, the athletes who've been through adversity, the athletes who've struggled, the athletes who maybe have had a less than ideal family background, their muscles recover quicker. Mm -hmm. I said, get out of here. I said, so it is, I mean, we know now we have a much better understanding of the brain. The brain is is through all, all of our body. We have, we, we think with our gut, we think with our heart, and we think with our brain as well. And I said, right, so that strength of spirit, if you like, that resilience transfers into muscle matter as well. And he said, yeah, I see it over and over and over again. So what I wanted to really focus on with feeling forwards was, to really transform yourself quickly to create the future you want rather than letting some random future happen to you. And I have a, a science-based process to do that. And what it is, is feeling forwards, which is putting yourself in the future and then working backwards. So um, I'll give you a, a, a very accessible example. So I had someone come to me and they were changing careers and they were very nervous about the interview because they were taking a slight 
sideways step and they hadn't interviewed for a while. I mean, COVID messed up a lot of stuff, a lot of us. <laughs> so I said, well, why don't you, and, and she'd read the book. I said, well, why don't you use feeling forward? So don't interview as the person who wants to get the job. Interview as the person who already has the job. And we went through all the behaviours and all the things that she would do that would make that happen. So I said, okay, if you get this job in three months' time, whereabouts do you think you might be living? And she named an area. She's in New York. I said, okay, we'll make sure you start going to that area close to the office and having coffee and just get familiar with the neighbourhood. I say, okay, if you had that job in three months' time, what would you be reading? And she said, well, I'll probably be reading this journal or this newspaper. We went through all of it down to how she would talk, how she would dress. And then she got so comfortable with being in the role because it's almost like acting your way into a different reality. She didn't feel nervous because she also read up a lot on the people who were going to interview her on LinkedIn. And so she felt she knew them. And she rang me afterwards and I, of course, was very excited to see how it went. She said I would never, uh, she got through to the next round, she said it would never have happened if I hadn't used feeling forwards because they asked me what I would achieve in my first three months. She said I knew my competitors, I knew the kind of campaign style I would be looking at to meet the current market needs. So I always love quoting Kerry Grant, who was now a while ago a very famous lead, leading man, but he used feeling forwards. He came to Hollywood searching for fame, but he didn't arrive as Archie Leach, the, the child of impoverished alcoholic parents. He arrived with a new name. He arrived with Cary Grant. And as he said, I pretended to be me until I became him or he became me. Mm. And that's how you transform yourself using, using feeling forwards. You use your emotions. I think the positive thinking wave well, scientifically positive thinking doesn't work. You can't think hope. You can't think confidence. And quite often I I remember being more than a little peeved when I had aggressive breast cancer and a children that were two and four and to be told by a perfectly healthy person to think positive, it really didn't invoke a very positive reaction inside me at the time. But it's our emotions and it's being able to harness our emotions that will really, really change our lives. Oh, yeah, I love that. Um, when, when you basically you talk about emotion, they're, they're the primary driving force for getting things done and for making change. And um, I know you I know you have a, you know, you're a Tony Robbins fan, but he talks about leveraging your emotions and creating this um, resource of resiliency, like mental just energy to, you know, despite all the setbacks, when you uh, when you talk about and you talk about this um, positive thinking, so why do you focus on emotions instead of positive thinking when talking about success? Our emotions really are the are the secret source. Uh, I share a story in the book which is the font of, of so many ideas, but it was a story about a reporter who learned of twins. One was homeless and one was incredibly successful. And twins, of course, everyone loves twins because they're raised at the same time in the same household by the same parents. And yet they can have very different lives, not always. But this reporter went to these twins and he interviewed the homeless twin and said, to what do you attribute the life you have today? And the homeless twin said, well, I had no choice. Choice. My father was an abusive alcoholic. I had no choice but to be successful. So it's really what we focus on, what we feel, what we, we draw into our circumstance. Another accessible story I share in the book is, Let's say you, you run into an old friend that you haven't seen for ages and you're pleased to see them. And, you know, you, we have friends that we're kind of never super close to, but we still consider them a friend. You're chatting to your friend and then you notice they seem a little bit edgy and perhaps not quite as enthusiastic as you to have the conversation. And anyway, you, part, you, you go your separate ways and then a few days uh, and you're thinking on the meeting and it doesn't feel great in your gut. You think, oh, so and so didn't seem all that pleased to see me. And then you start to remember what you don't like about so and so. You remember maybe they stood you up, maybe they let you down, maybe you were at a party and they didn't talk to you, etc. And you think a view of that person shaped by this encounter forms in your mind and you feel differently about them. But then you run into another mutual friend and you say, Oh, I saw so and so the other day, you know, they seem to be off. And I said, Oh my God, you know, their dad's really, really sick. They're having to run the business. 
Um, they've had the most awful time. And your mind goes back again. And you revisit that same memory, but we rewrite our memories over and over again. Our memories are never totally real. And then you think, gosh, you know, they did look a bit thin and they looked really tired. And when they said goodbye, they really did say it was great to see you. And they look as though they meant it, even though they looked as though they had to dash away. Your emotions change. You think, yeah. And then you start to remember all the good things about so-and-so, all the times that you did have that special bond. And then you think, oh, really, I really do want to catch up. I'll, I'll reach out and see what I can do for them. The emotions have completely changed that memory and they've also created a different future as well. There's no amount of, of thinking that will inspire you. It's harnessing the power of your emotion and then choosing your emotions to create what you want to happen. Yeah, I really, you know, it's, um, you know, I was reading this um, one one of these great uh, books and it was talking about, you know, it's pers- like the, it's the stories we tell ourselves and, you know, we have these inputs. You, There could be two people with the same input with totally different perceptions and one takes it in a different way, the other takes it in a different way, and um, which is really interesting. You talk about this, you know, your new book, you have a podcast as well, Feeling Forward. Uh, what is it, uh, one thing, because you have um, you have this you have this secret mindset and then you also have a um, success maximizer method. Um, tell the audience more about that and, um, you know, as well as your podcast and your book to, to sure. end it out. Sure. Well, Feeling Forwards is really, really is a manual, if you like, on how to choose and create the emotions you want to really move you forward. And I was so grateful. So yes, Tony Robbins has been in, in my life for a little while now, but he endorsed the book with a beautiful quote. I met him numerous times while I, well, I attended his events as his guest and, and caught up with him in person a couple of years ago now. And he's just been such a, a great support. So after I finished Feeling Forwards, I wanted to create really a roadmap, a very personalizing program for high achievers that maybe feel as though they'd lost their way. Or, you know, a lot of people have a lot of stuff, but they don't feel successful. Because let's face it, having a lot of stuff doesn't make you feel as though in yourself that you really are where you want to be. So the Success Maximizer Method really hones in on the three elements of the personal success formula I mentioned earlier, which is your aim, your inner justification, and then your behaviors and attributes. Because so often I start to coach someone and we start to unpack why they where they don't feel they're on track anymore. And usually they say, oh, look, I've got, I've just got these bad habits, you know, I can't get up early and crunch it out at the gym at four o'clock like I used to, or I've, I've, you know, it's just, it's just not working. And they ask me to really help them with their behaviors and attitudes. But as we get to unpack it, usually there's the problem starts at the earlier part of the personal success formula, which is their aim and their inner justification. Because these change as we go through life, there's, we're in a constant cycle of creating building enjoying it's like it's like the four seasons you know everything happens at a different time and sometimes our inner justification to achieve a certain stage or to get to a certain point is really really strong but then life happens like small children or elderly parents or covid and the reasons it used to get us out of bed and and going and working late at night aren't there anymore. So I work through a very individual program. It's a very intense program. Some of my clients choose to keep me on after that on like a a monthly retainer. But it's really, once you know what your elements of your personal success formula are, then you know which part you need to tweak. Okay, has my is my aim as clear as it was or have external circumstances throw me a little bit on track do i need to recalibrate that or my inner justification i used to have a lot more a lot more time i no longer have that because of family reasons so what is what's going to keep me going to just get that small step further instead of that big leap i was aiming for and then finally you know i when people talk about creating their future we're working together it's in the little things the devil is always in the detail it's like okay so if you were this billionaire or mm-hmm. cancer, you know, you've, you've found a cure for cancer or whatever your your jam is, would you actually be spending four hours watching Netflix on a Saturday morning? 
what would that person do who's got where you want to go? Would they be doing that? And if, if you wouldn't be doing that in the future, well, why are you doing it now? I've worked with so many entrepreneurs that have said to me, um, oh, look, when, when my app gets downloaded 100,000 <laughs> times, then I'll get the finance guy in to fix up the finances. Or, and you would have heard this as a doctor as well, oh, when I've achieved blah, 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 then I'll start to look after my health. Mm. It's like, well, you're never going to be that person in the future if you can't be that person in the present. And on my podcast, Feeling Forward, so I, I high achievers, I achieve, uh, interview people that have overcome challenges and I also have my own observations as well. I, I'm really passionate that there is a way, there is a very accessible way for everyone to achieve the greatness that they have in their heart. And my personal mission is to to reveal that. It's not about thinking positive. It's not about wishing and hoping. And it's not about dwelling on or even thinking that anything that hasn't worked out is a failure because it's not. So, yeah, so well said and, you know, such a very deep and insightful episode. For all the listeners out there, let's thank Elizabeth for coming on. Um, be sure to check out her book, which is on Amazon, Feeling Forwards. The link will be in the show notes. And she's also on Facebook, Instagram, and she also has a podcast as well, Feeling Forward. So be sure to check that out. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the show and sharing your story. It's been a pleasure, Christopher. Thank you so much.